Hi friend, I know that you're praying for your healing and I wanted the opportunity to pray with you and to declare God's word over you. What does God have to say about your health and about your healing? Jesus said, have faith in God. For surely I tell you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he asks. Believe and you will receive. Believe and you will receive. Believe God and you absolutely will receive. Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Beloved, believe God. Believe God and your life will be established. Believe as prophets and you will succeed. This comes from Mark 11, 22 through 24 and 2 Chronicles 20, 20. Do you know that we can pray all the right things? We can even declare all the right things. But if we do not believe God, if we do not mingle faith with our prayers and declarations, they mean nothing. So let's together believe God. The Lord says, I am the Lord, your healer, Exodus 15, 26. The Lord says, I will protect you from illness, Exodus 23, 25. Yes, the Lord says he will protect you from all sickness, Deuteronomy 7, 15. Today, I've given you a choice between life and death, between blessings and curses. Now I call on heaven and earth to witness the choice that you've made. You've chosen life by choosing to love God and obey Him, connecting yourself firmly to Him. This really is the key to your life. And because you love and obey the Lord, the Lord says you will live a long life in the land. That's right, Deuteronomy 30, 19 through 20. Even when you walk through the darkest of days, you will not be afraid. For the Lord, your healer, is close beside you. Yes, certainly, God in all of his unfailing love, mercy, and goodness will pursue you all the days of your life. Psalms 23, 3 through 6. I will reward you with a long life and give you my salvation. Psalms 91, 16. The psalmist says, he forgives us of all of our sins and heals us of all of our diseases. Psalms 103, verse 3. He sent out his word and healed you, snatching you from the door of death, Psalms 107, 20. That's right, God's word, even right now, is being sent out on a mission to heal you and snatch you from the door of death. Psalms 118 through 17 says, you will not die, instead you will live and tell what the Lord has done. So, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. And do not rely on your own understanding, but in all of your ways acknowledge him, and he will make the paths of your life smooth, Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. One of my favorite verses to pray for healing is the verses that follow that say, hey, because you're not impressed with your own wisdom, because you do fear the Lord and turn away from evil, healing comes to all of your flesh and all of your bones, and it comes speedily, that's Proverbs 3, 7 through 8. Don't be afraid, for I am with you. Hear even right now the word of the Lord to your heart. Don't be afraid, for I'm with you. Don't be discouraged, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you, and I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. For I hold you by my right hand. I, the Lord your God, and I say to you, do not be afraid. I'm here to help you. What a beautiful picture. That's Isaiah 41, 10 through 13. That the Lord who holds the whole world in between his fingers is holding you by your hand. I know it's hard to not be afraid when the pain screams louder than the promise, but you've got to hear how loud this promise is. The Lord himself says to your heart today, don't be afraid. Why? Because I am with you and I'm holding your hand and I will help you. But he was pierced for our rebellion, crushed for our sins. He was beaten so that we could be whole. He, Jesus, was whipped so that you could be healed. Isaiah 53, 
verse 5. Then the Lord said to me, You've seen well, for I am alert and active, watching over my word to perform it. Jeremiah 1.12 I will give you back your health and heal all of your wounds. Jeremiah 30.17 Jesus said, I tell you the truth. Whatever you forbid on earth will be forbidden in heaven, and whatever you permit on earth will be permitted in heaven. I also tell you this, if two of you agree here on earth concerning anything you ask, my Father in heaven will do it for you. For where two or three gather together as my followers, I am there among them. Then Jesus told them, I tell you the truth, if you have faith and don't doubt, you can do things like this and even much more. You can even say to this sickness, may you be lifted up and thrown into the sea and it will happen. It's Matthew 18, 18, 18 through 20 and Matthew 21, verse 21. But Jesus overheard them and he said, don't be afraid, just have faith. Mark 5, 36. I want you to know that the Lord heard the bad report. Uh, he heard the diagnosis that was devastating, but he tells you in all of his love and all of his strength with so much compassion, he says, hey, don't be afraid. Just have faith. Isaiah 43, 26. Put me in remembrance. Let us plead together. Set forth your cause that you may be justified. Hebrews 11:6 And without faith it is impossible to please him for he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who seek him 2 Corinthians 1:18 through 20 But as God is faithful our word to you is not yes and no for the son of God Christ Jesus who was preached among you by us and by me and Silvanus and Timothy was not yes and no, but is yes in him. For as many as are the promises of God, in him they are yes. Therefore also through him in our amen to the glory of God through us. James 1, 6 and 7. But he must ask in faith without any doubting. For the one who doubts is like the surf of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For that man ought not to expect that he will receive anything from the Lord, being a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. Luke 10, 19 and 20. Behold, I have given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing will injure you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your names are recorded in heaven. Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 10 and 12. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. These words which I am commanding you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your sons and shall talk on them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise up. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontals on your forehead. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Then it shall come about when the Lord your God brings you into the land which he swore to your fathers Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to give you. Then watch yourself that you do not forget the Lord who brought you from the land of Egypt out of the house of slavery. Romans 10, 8 through 10. But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith, which we are preaching, that if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. John 15, 7. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you. Ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. John 16, 23 and 24. 
In that day you will no longer ask me anything. Truly, truly, I say to you, if you ask the Father for anything in my name, he will give it to you. Until now you have asked for nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive, so that your joy may be made full. Acts 13, 41. Look, you scoffers, be amazed and perish, for in your days I am doing a work, a work that you will never believe, even if some one tells you. James 1, 2 through 6. Consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance, and let endurance have its perfect result, so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. But if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all generously and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But he must ask in faith, without any doubting. For the one who doubts is like the surf of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. 1 Peter 1, 6-7 In this you greatly rejoice, even though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been distressed by various trials, so that the proof of your faith, being more precious than gold, which is perishable, even though tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Isaiah 53, 4-5 Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, and the chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Matthew 8, verses 16 and 17. When evening came, they brought to him all who were demon-possessed, and he cast out the spirits with a word, and healed all who were ill. This was to fulfill what was spoken through the Isaiah the prophet. He himself took our infirmities and healed our diseases. Hebrews 10, verse 25. Not forsaking our own assembling together, as in the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. John 15, verse 2. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away, and every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. Mark 16, verse 18. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. These signs will accompany those who have believed. In my name they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will pick up serpents. And if they drink in any, any deadly poison, it will not hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. Romans 14.23 But he who doubts is condemned if he eats, because he is eating not from faith. And whatever is not from faith is sin. Exodus 15, verse 26. Obey God's word and be healed, and said, If you diligently heed the voice of the Lord your God, and do what is right in his sight, give ear to his commandments, and keep all of his statutes, I will put none of the diseases on you which I have brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. Exodus 23, verse 25. Serve the Lord, and healing will be yours. So you shall serve the Lord your God, and he will bless your bread and your water, and I will take sickness away from the midst of you. Deuteronomy 7, verse 15. God takes all sickness away from you, and the Lord will take away from you all sickness, and will afflict you with none of the terrible diseases of Egypt which you have known, but will lay them on all those who hate you. Deuteronomy 30, verse 19. Choose to live be a fighter. I call heaven and earth as a witness today against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life, that both you and your descendants may live. 2 Kings 20 verses 4 through 7. So before Isaiah had left the courtyard, the Lord spoke to him again. Go back to Hezekiah, the leader of my people, and tell him that the Lord God of his ancestors David has heard his prayer and seen his tears. I will heal him, and three days from now he will be out of bed and at the temple. I will add fifteen years to his life and save him and this city from the king of Syria. 
and it will be all done for the glory of my own name and for the sake of my servant David. Isaiah then instructed Hezekiah to boil dried figs and to make a paste of them and spread it over the boil. And he recovered. Joshua 21, 45. God's word will not fail. Not a word failed of any good thing which the Lord had spoken to the house of Israel. All came to pass. Psalm 30, verses 2 and 3. O Lord my God, I pleaded with you, and you gave me my health again. You brought me back from the brink of the grave, from death itself, and here I am alive. Psalms 91, 16. You will live a long life. With long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Psalms 103, 1 through 5. One of God's benefits is healing. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Psalms 107, verse 20. God's word is healing. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Psalms 118, 17. God wants you to live. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. Proverbs 4, verse 20 through 22. My child, pay attention to what I say. Listen carefully to my words. Don't lose sight of them. Let them penetrate deep into your heart. For they bring life to those that find them in healing to their whole body. Proverbs 40, verses 20 through 22. The word of God will save your life. My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. For they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. Isaiah 43, verses 25 through 26. Plead your case to God. Even I am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake, and I will not remember your sins. Put me in remembrance. Let us contend together. State your case that you may be acquitted. Isaiah 53, verse 5. Jesus bore your sins and sicknesses, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed. Jeremiah 30 verse 17, God will restore your health, for I will restore health to you and heal you of your wounds, says the Lord. Because they called you an outcast, saying, This is Zion, no one seeks her. Joel 3 verse 10, You can find strength in God and his word. Let the weak say, I am strong. Nahum 1 verse 9, your sickness will leave and not come back again. What do you conspire against the Lord? He will make an utter end of it. Affliction will not rise up a second time. Malachi 3 verse 10. Obey all God's commandments and receive all his blessings. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. And try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such a blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. Matthew 8 verses 2 through 3. It is God's will for you to be healed. And behold, a leper came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Then Jesus put out his hand and touched him, saying, I am willing, be cleansed. Immediately his leprosy was cleansed. Matthew 18, 18. You can take authority over sickness in your body. Assuredly, I say to you, whatsoever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Matthew 18, 19. Agree with someone for your healing. Again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. Luke 17, 19. Jesus said to him, Get up and go on your way. Your faith, your personal trust in me, and your confidence in God's power has restored you to health. John 9, 31. 
We know that God does not listen to sinners, but if anyone is God-fearing and a worshiper of Him and does His will, He listens to Him. John 10.10 The thief comes only in order to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have and enjoy life and have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. Romans 4 19 through 21. He did not weaken in faith when he considered the utter importance of his own body, which was as good as dead because he was about a hundred years old, or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's deadened wound. No unbelief or distrust made him waver, doubtingly question concerning the promise of God. But he grew strong and was empowered by faith as he gave praise and glory to God, fully satisfied and assured that God was able and mighty to keep his word and to do what he had promised. Romans 8, 11. And if the spirit of him who raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, then he who raised up Christ Jesus from the dead will also restore your life your mortal, short-lived, perishable bodies through His Spirit who dwells in you. 2 Corinthians 1.20 For as many as are the promises of God, they all find their yes in Him, Christ. For this reason, we also utter the Amen, so be it, to God through Him, in His person, by His agency, to the glory of God. 2 Corinthians 1.20 He, Jesus Christ, carries out and fulfills all of God's promises, no matter how many of them there are, and we have told everyone how faithful He is, giving glory to His name. 2 Corinthians 10.3-5 For though we walk and live in the flesh, we are not carrying on our own warfare according to the flesh and using mere human weapons. For the weapons of our warfare are not physical, weapons of flesh and blood, but they are mighty before God for the overthrow and destruction of strongholds. Inasmuch as we refute arguments and theories and reasonings and every profound and lofty thing that sets itself up against the true knowledge of God, And we lead every thought and purpose away captive into the obedience of Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One. Galatians 3.13 Christ purchased our freedom, redeeming us from the curse, doom, of the law and its condemnation by himself becoming a curse for us. For it is written in the scriptures, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. Is crucified. Ephesians 6 10 through 17. In conclusion, be strong in the Lord. Be empowered through your union with Him. Draw your strength from Him, that strength which His boundless might provides. Put on God's whole armor, the armor of a heavy armed soldier which God supplies, that you may be able successfully to stand up against all the strategies and the deceits of the devil. For we are not wrestling with flesh and blood, contending only with physical opponents, but against the powers, against the master spirits who are the world rulers of this present darkness, against the spirit forces of wickedness in the heavenly supernatural sphere, that you may be able to resist and stand your ground on the evil day of danger, and having done all the crisis demands to stand firmly in your place. Stand therefore, hold your ground, having tightened the belt of truth around your loins, put on the breastplate of integrity and of moral restitude and right standing with God, and having shod your feet in preparation to face the enemy with the firm-footed stability, the promptness, the readiness produced by the good news of the gospel of peace. Lift up over all the covering shield of saving faith, upon which you can quench all of the flaming missiles of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword that the Spirit wields, which is the word of God. Philippians 1.6 
And I am convinced and sure of this very thing, that he who began a good work in you will continue until the day of Jesus Christ, right up to the time of his return, developing that good work and perfecting and bringing it to the full completion in you. Philippians 2.13 Not in your own strength, for it is God who is all the while effectively at work in you, energizing and creating in you the power and desire both to will and to work for his good pleasure and satisfaction and delight. Philippians 4, 6 through 8. Do not fret or have any anxiety about anything, but in every circumstance and in everything, by prayer and petition, definite requests, with thanksgiving, continue to make your wants known to God. And God's peace shall be yours, that tranquil state of a soul assured of its salvation through Christ, and so fearing nothing from God, and being content with its earthly lot of whatsoever sort that is, that peace, which transcends all understanding, shall garrison and mount guard over your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. For the rest, brethren, Whatever is true, whatever is worthy of reverence and is honorable and seemly, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely and lovable, whatever is kind and winsome and gracious, if there is any virtue of excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think on and weigh and take account of these things. Fix your minds on them. 2 Timothy 1.7 for God did not give us a spirit of timidity, of cowardice, of craven and cringing and fawning fear, but he has given us a spirit of power and of love and of calm and well-balanced mind and discipline and self-control. Hebrews 10, 23 and 25. So let us seize and hold fast and retain without wavering the hope we cherish and confess and our acknowledgement of it. For he who promised is reliable, sure, and faithful to his word, not forsaking or neglecting to assemble together as believers, as in the habit of some people, but admonishing, warning, urging, and encouraging one another, and all the more faithfully as you see the day approaching. Hebrews 10.35 Do not therefore Fling away your fearless confidence, for it carries a great and glorious compensation of reward. Hebrews 11.11 11. Because of faith, also, Sarah herself received physical power to conceive a child, even when she was long past the age for it, because she considered God, who had given her the promise to be reliable and trustworthy and true to his word. Hebrews 13, 8. Jesus Christ, the Messiah, is always the same yesterday, today, yes, and forever, to the ages. James 1, 5. If any of you is deficient in wisdom, let him ask of the giving God who gives to everyone liberally and ungrudgingly without reproaching or fault finding, and it will be given him. James 3, 17. But the wisdom from above is first of all pure, undefiled, then it is peace-loving, courteous, considerate, gentle, it is willing to, yield to reason, full of compassion and good fruits, it is wholehearted and straightforward, impartial and unfeigned, free from doubts, wavering and insecurity. James 5, 14 through 15. Is anyone among you sick? He should call to the church elders, the spiritual guides, and they should pray over him, anointing him with oil in the Lord's name. And the prayer, that is, of faith, will save him who is sick, and the Lord will restore him. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. 1 Peter 2.24 He personally bore our sins, his own body, on the tree, as on an altar, and offered himself on it that we might die, cease to exist, to sin, and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. 1 Peter 5, 7-9 
casting the whole of your care, all your anxieties, all your worries, all your concerns once and for all on him. For he cares for you affectionately and cares about you watchfully. Be well balanced, temperate, sober of mind. Be vigilant and cautious at all times. For that enemy of yours, the devil, roams around like a lion, roaring in fierce hunger, seeking someone to seize up and devour. Withstand him. Be firm in faith against his onset, rooted, established, strong, immovable, and determined, knowing that the same identical sufferings are appointed to your brotherhood, the whole body of Christians throughout the world. 1 John 3, 21 through 22. And beloved, if our consciences, our hearts, do not accuse, if they do not make us feel guilty and condemn us, we have confidence, complete assurance and boldness before God, and we receive from him whatever we ask, because we watchfully obey his orders, observe his suggestions and injunctions, follow his plan for us, and habitually practice what is pleasing to him. 1 John 5, 14 through 15. And this is the confidence, the same assurance, the privilege of boldness, which we have in him. We are sure that if we ask anything, make any request according to his will, in agreement with his own plan, he listens to and hears us. And if, since we positively know that he listens to us in whatever we ask, we also know with settled and absolute knowledge that he gave, granted us, that we have granted as our present possessions the requests made of him. 3 John 1, 2 Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in every way, that your body may keep well, even as I know your soul keeps well and prospers. Revelation 12, 1 And they have overcome, conquered, him by means of the blood of the Lamb and by the utterance of their testimony. For they did not love and cling to life even when faced with death, holding their lives cheap till they had to die for their witnessing. Matthew eighteen nineteen. Again, I assure you, if two of you on earth agree about any matter that you pray for, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. John 14, 12 through 14. Anyone who has faith in me will do what I have been doing. He will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Son may bring glory to the Father. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. The Lord said, If you will listen carefully to my voice and do what is right in my sight, obeying my commands and keeping my decrees, then you will not suffer any of the diseases I put on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. Exodus 15, verse 26. Worship the Lord your God, and I will bless your food and water. I will remove sickness from your midst. Exodus 23, verse 25. And the Lord will take away all of your sickness. He will not let you suffer from the terrible diseases you knew in Egypt, but he will lay them upon all who hate you. Deuteronomy 7 verse 15. If you will fully obey the Lord your God and carefully keep his commands, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth, and you will experience all the blessings of obeying the Lord your God. Deuteronomy 28, 1 and 2. Today I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. I call on heaven and earth to witness the choice that you make today. Oh, that you would choose life and that you and your descendants may live. Make this choice today by loving the Lord your God, obeying him and committing yourself firmly to him. Deuteronomy 30 verses 19 and 20. Every single good promise that the Lord had given the nation of Israel came true. Not one was left unfulfilled. Joshua 21, verse 45. Praise the Lord who gives rest to his people Israel, just like he promised he would. Not a single word or promise he has spoken has failed. 1 Kings 8, verse 56. No, I will not break my covenant, says the Lord. I will not alter a single word that I have spoken. 
Psalm 89, verse 34. I will satisfy you with a full life, says the Lord. You will enjoy the fullness of my salvation. Psalm 91, verse 16. Let everything I am praise the Lord. With my whole heart I will bless his holy name. Let everything I am praise the Lord, and may I never forget all the good that he has done for me. He forgives all my sin. He heals all my disease. He has redeemed me from death, and he crowns me with his love and tender mercy. He satisfies me and fills my life with good things. He renews my strength and my youth like the eagles. Psalm 103, verses 1 through 5. He freed them from their slavery, laden with silver and gold, and there was not one feeble person among them. Psalm 105, verse 37. He sends forth his word and heals them, rescuing them from the door of death and the grave. Psalm 107, verse 20. I will not die. Instead, I will live and declare to the world what the Lord has done for me. Psalm 118, verse 17. Trust the Lord with all your heart, and don't rely on your own understanding. In all your ways, recognize and acknowledge Him, and He will smooth out the path ahead of you. Proverbs 3, verse 5 and 6. My child, listen closely to my words. Pay attention to what I'm saying. Let these words sink deep into your heart, for they are life to those who find them, healing and health to their entire body. Keep and guard your heart with all vigilance and above all else, for it determines the course of your life. Proverbs 4, verse 20 through 23. Don't be afraid, for I am with you. Don't be discouraged, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you up with my strong right hand. Again, I say, I will hold you. Don't be afraid, I'm here to help you. Isaiah 41, verse 10 and 13. Don't be afraid, for I have ransomed and redeemed you. I've called you by name and you are mine. When you go through the deep waters, I'll be right there with you. When you go through the rivers of difficulty, you won't drown. And when you walk through the fires of oppression, you won't be consumed or even burned. For I am the Lord your God, your Savior. I have ransomed and redeemed you. You are precious to me. Isaiah 43, verse 1 through 4. Yet it was our weaknesses that he carried. It was our sorrows that weighed him down, not because of his own sin, but because of ours. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our guilt and iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was laid upon him, and by his stripes we are healed and made whole. Isaiah 53, verse 4 and 5. Then the Lord said to me, You have seen well, for I am alert and I am active. I watch over my word and will perform it. Jeremiah 1, verse 12. For I will give you back your health and I will heal your wounds, says the Lord. Jeremiah 30, verse 17. Prepare for battle. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak loudly say, I am strong. Joel 3, verse 10. The Lord is good, a strong refuge when trouble comes. He is close to those who trust in Him. Who can devise and plot against the Lord? He will make a full end of the matter. Affliction will not rise up a second time. Nahum 1 verses 7 and 9. Suddenly a leper came to Jesus and knelt before Him, worshiping and saying, Lord, if You are willing, You can heal me and make me clean. Jesus reached out His hand and touched Him, and He told Him, I am willing. Be healed and cleansed, and instantly his leprosy was cured. Matthew 8, verses 2 and 3. And Jesus fulfilled what was spoken by the prophet Isaiah. He himself took our sicknesses and removed our diseases from us. Matthew 8, verse 17. Truly I tell you, whatever you forbid and declare to be unlawful on the earth will have already been bound in heaven, and whatever you permit and declare to be lawful on earth will have already been permitted in heaven. Again I tell you, if two of you on earth agree about whatever you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For wherever two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. Matthew 18, verses 18 through 20. And Jesus answered them, Truly I say to you, if you have faith and do not doubt, you will not only do things like this, but also much more. You can say to this mountain, Be lifted up and thrown into the sea, and it will be done. Matthew 21, verse 21. 
Then Jesus said to her, Daughter, your faith has restored you to health. Go in peace. Your suffering is over. Mark 5 verse 34. Have faith, I tell you the truth. If you can say to this mountain, be lifted up and thrown into the sea, without doubting at all, but believing in your heart that what you say will take place, it will be done for you. For this reason I'm telling you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that it is granted to you and you will receive it. Mark 11 verse 23 and 24. And these signs will follow those that believe. They will cast out demons in my name. They will speak in new languages. They will handle snakes safely, drink poison and not be hurt. They will place their hands on the sick and see them healed. Mark 16 verse 17 and 18. Listen closely. I have given you authority and power to trample over the enemy, to walk among snakes and scorpions and to crush them. Nothing will harm you or hurt you. Luke 10 verse 19. God bless you, my friend. I'm believing God for your healing, standing with you in this season.